delirium is considered to be present when the score on the following eight items assessed in each nursing staff is four or higher. So altered level of consciousness, uh, coma is when there is no response or stupor, no response to loud voice or pain. We don't score it when we have no response, obviously, response only to intense and repeated stimulation. Again, we uh, say there is no response in terms of our scale. If on mild or moderate stimulation, the patient gives you response, we mark it as one and normal wakefulness or sleep with easy arousal is zero. Exaggerated response to normal stimulation, again, we give one point. This is because we differentiate delirium also on the terms of types of delirium, which we come, uh, we will come on to later. So we have certain uh, uh, levels, certain uh, division of delirium further into the hypoactive and the hyperactive types. So even if the patient is giving you a hyperactive uh, response, that is also abnormal. Inattention is measured by difficulty uh, following conversation or instructions, whatever you can give a mathematical problem to them, or you can ask them to count back from 20 to 1. And uh, if they are easily distracted, you give one point. And if they have disorientation, any obvious mistake in time, place, person, which we often ask to our patients, you give one point. Hallucination, delusion, or psychosis, we give one point. Hyperactivity requiring sedation or restraints or clinically important psych uh, psychomotor uh, slowing, we give one point. Inappropriate speech or mood, again, we give one point. Sleep-wake cycle uh, disturbance, we give frequent spontaneous awakening or sleeping less than four hours during the night. Again, we give one point. Marked fluctuation in symptoms or in the manifestation of any of the above items from shift to shift, we give uh, one point. So this is a checklist, again, which you have to take out a printout. Of course, you will not be remembering it uh, so easy, easily with so many things in life. So don't hesitate to take out a printout. Keep it in your hand and check it on your patients. So if we see the pathophysiology of uh, delirium, how all these alterations lead on to an acute change in our brain, we will see that uh, uh, those patients who have a neurological diagnosis, for example, a head injury, also are more prone to having delirium. They might be having pre-existing mental impairment, which will increase it. Medical comorbidities, again, severity of illness, advanced stage, we already spoke about it. Observable and occult medical uh, abnormalities could be there, which have been there, but the patient doesn't know about them. Withdrawal from chronic psychoactive medications or substances, uh, here and we could also add on alcohol or for that matter, smoking also. Patient could be used to them. He's not able to smoke or drink in the ICU, so they get acutely confused. Uh, certain patients are on opioids on, and, and benzodiazepines, either as a recreational drug or due to their uh, underlying illness, which could be uh, a source of agitation and unpleasant awareness. Sleep deprivation, noise in the ICU, very, very important. Use of excessive sedation and the presence of pain. This is a vicious circle which sets in wherein the pain is uncontrolled. It leads to more of delirium. It leads to more of agita agitation and unpleasant awareness, further causing a positive feedback on the pain and uh, leading on to a loop which the patient gets into leading on to delirium. Elements of uh, routine ICU care, which is turning, physical therapy, endotracheal tube, tissue injury, vascular excess, uh, affective component, also can increase the amount of pain which could be there for our patients. The physical restraint, inability to communicate, you're not able uh, to, to communicate with them, either you or their family members, you're not listening to them, they get acutely confused. Ventilator desynchrony, lack of uh, homeostasis, which means that thirst, hunger, and dyspnea on the ventilated patients, we are not listening to them when they often say, I need some water. Frustration out of getting acutely ill and being in the ICU per se could also lead to anxiety, and uh, uh, pro which could be appropriate to the condition or it could be pathologic, can lead to more of agitation, unpleasant awareness of your uh, environment. So all these factors which we have just spoken about 
lead on to the effect on cholinergic activity uh, activation the the cholinergic inhibition the reduced gaba activity or excessive gaba activation cortisol access glutamine activation uh, serotonin deficiency serotonin activation so all these are the neurotransmitters uh, all of them are present inside our brain which leads to an imbalance between uh, the good uh, uh, neurotransmitters and the bad neurotransmitters which can lead to this acute form of uh, confusional state leading on to this imbalance between these chemicals causing the problem in our patient which could be global disturbance of cognition psychomotor disturbance emotional dysregulation circadian rhythm difference and impairment of consciousness and attention so these are the factors which you will see in your patients with the the delirium just excuse me for a moment So these are very important things because mnemonics are the ones which in our medical uh, field help us to remember certain uh, complex problems. We may not be remember, um, remembering the whole problem because of the complexity of our, uh, of our books and our, uh, and our scales and complexity of, of the topics. I, I included this pinch me mnemonic uh, deliberately to at least get you something out of this lecture so that you can remember it for life so that you can see this kind of in, uh, uh, information in your patient and act upon it so this is to help identify potential causes of del delirium which could be there so pain infection nutrition which could be lack or excess of nutri nutrition constipation hydration issues which, which could be either uh, under or over hydration use of medication per se your medication causing the side effects or excessive use of medication for example uh, the sedation and the pain control or the interaction between these kind of medications or the poly polypharmacy which we have already spoken about also the environment may not be conducive to your patient all of you know whenever we change beds if we go from one place to another even uh, even for our work engagements we see that how we are not able uh, to sleep in another bed and that causes uh, a lot of problem uh, uh, after uh, after we wake up uh, in, in the morning, next morning. So this is same for your patient. If they are not in their usual environment, they can get these kind of problems and pinch me is the one uh, a mnemonic which you can remember in case of your del delirium patients. How we differentiate between delirium and dementia, often we do get confused between the, uh, these two terms and because delirium is, is more common in our elderly population, those patients may already be having dementia as an underlying disorder present in them. So we always see delirium is acute or upset, uh, abrupt onset. On the other hand, dementia is usually insidious, which can be abrupt in certain conditions, which could be stroke or trauma, because underlying condition was already there. It was not being recognized. They were more or less going on well. And now they have acutely present with some kind of problem that has precipitated the underlying condition. Uh, a simile could be made to patients who we have recognized during the COVID time. We already had hypoxia setting in for which we were doing the HRCT and uh, patients already had certain underlying problems which got picked up during the COVID time leading on to an earlier diagnosis. So this is similarly found in our patients, especially elderly patients, wherein for years they don't get themselves checked and dementia could already have been present. And now they have unfortunately fallen at home, which has led to the, the unmasking of dementia, which was already there. In delirium, the course is fluctuating and in dementia, it is a slow decline. It, it is a progressively increasing uh, uh, decline in, in the cognition which happens in these patients, which could be uh, helping you to recognize these patients. Duration in delirium is from hours to weeks. On the other hand, in dementia, it is a longer duration. It is months to years. 
Attention is, is impaired in delirium very early in the presentation. On the other hand, in dementia, it is in, intact initially, but later on in the later stages, it is impaired. The sleep-wake cycle is disturbed in delirium as against dementia, where it is usually normal. Alertness may be impaired in delirium and it is normal in dementia. Orientation is always impaired in delirium. And on the other hand, in dementia, it is normal. Uh, sorry, it is intact early and impaired later. The behavior is agitated, withdrawn or depressed, which means the hypoactive or a combination of two, which means the mixed one. The behavior is intact early, but in later on stages, they could become really, really aggressive or they could just sulk in, in a room and sit quietly during whole of their uh, existence. The speech is incoherent and rapid or slowed in case of delirium. On the other hand, uh, the people who have dementia, they have a word finding problem. Thoughts are disorganized and delusional in delirium and they are impoverished in dementia. Uh, you could find certain hallucinations and illusions in your delirious patients. However, in case of dementia patients, this problem doesn't arise. <laughs>